Hi everybody, I want to show you a bit more information I found out about my Galaxy Heat Press. Let me share that with you in this video. Keep watching. Right, as you know, I've had my Galaxy Heat Press now for my mug sublimation business probably for about two weeks now. And um, when I got this mug press, it didn't have any instructions because it was just, I got a pre production. Uh, version so to speak and I think there's been a few little tweaks along the way so I found out a few little other things about it there was this little bracket which I had laying under here and I obviously never knew what it was for hence me still leaving it sitting there and the supplier actually watched my video and told me what that was so I'm just going to share that with you now as to what this bracket is let's have a little quick look this little bracket is a a little stay to keep the mug from sliding right away through and it actually fits on either side of the, uh, the mug press and all you do is you get this little bracket hold it over there and screw it into the the available hole as i say it's got one of these on either side and that just holds it in place there and as you can see now what it's actually done is given us a little bracket that we can actually adjust by turning this thumb wheel to actually get your mug central every time so you haven't got to worry about it slicking out either side of the mug. So looking down from above, as you can see now, I can just bring the mug in one side, it will hit the stop and you automatically know that you're in the right position. So I never knew, as I say, what that was. And that is fully adjustable as well, as I say, look. And what I've also found out as well is that these elements, as you know, which are held on by these four screws here and underneath the back, as I've showed you in my last video, there's a little plug you pull out. You actually can remove this out whole actual element and what sublimates, subly blanks are actually doing is actually supplying three different size heating elements that you can install in this actual machine, which is great. So you, the one that comes standard is the, for the standard uh, 11 ounce coffee mug, which are basically these types of mugs. These are the only ones I ever print on, so that's the only one I use. But now what I've got is the facility, if I want to, to buy the other two elements uh, that come with these. One's gonna be a six ounce ones, that's the, like the little kiddies mugs. And then you've got the larger, the, the 14 ounce mug, which is obviously a, a lot bigger mug. I haven't seen one of them personally myself, but I know the six ounce ones. And they all go in this machine and it's just a matter of undoing these four nuts here, take and undoing the socket at the back for the electrical connection. There's no tools needed to do that. You can do that by hand. And then you just insert the new mug and reconnect the, the connector up. And hey presto, you've got a multi-tool uh, heat press, mug press for three different types of standard the straight coffee mugs so that's ideal I didn't know that as I say because I didn't have no instructions I was unaware of that and I was also unaware of what that little bracket was so I've got that now what I'm going to do now is just to print a few more mugs I'm trying this new paper which Sabla Blank sent to me and I'm still using my original printer but this is the um, the cut to length paper as you can see it's all cut to the actual correct size and if I just hold it up for you, I don't know whether you can actually see that at all. It's called Die Sub Magic. Now, Subly Blanks apparently have been using this themselves. My paper I use uh, is a different brand. And don't forget, uh, when I started printing with uh, the, the press in the first tutorial, I had a little issue because I didn't know whether the mug uh, was uh, too loose in the press or the times needed changing. So it's the same with any press, really. You have to play about with... The, uh, if you're using different materials than what Subly Blanks was using, as I was, I was using a totally different transfer paper. You may have, and I, I wasn't sure about the actual thumb wheel as well. You know, you've got to find the happy medium. The settings which they give you are, are they're, saying, uh, they're saying 180 degrees C for 135 seconds. Now, for my paper I was using, it didn't quite work like that, as I say. Plus, I had to increase the pressure a little bit. So, I'm, I've just, I'm playing about now with different paper again, and I'm going to try and see what results we get there. Uh, I had that, if you remember, on the last, the first mug I pressed, I had the uh, the very faint, it went a bit faint on the actual edge of the actual printed mug, so then I increased the pressure for the second mug. Someone actually accused me of cheating printing two mugs. That wasn't the case, I don't do that, I don't risk my reputation like that at all, but someone actually thought that I actually printed two mugs and was trying to pull the wool over people's eyes. i show you exactly what I do, this is my home business, I've done it for 10 years, and all I can do is show you what I do, and this is what I'm doing. I'm on the learning curve with you now with this new mug press, and I'm trying this paper for the first time. I have not used this yet at all. I've just opened a packet, and I've just changed my printer settings in the uh, Power Driver software, which is the software which I use 
for my uh, inks that I use, my sublimation inks for this gel printer, which is the Rico printer. My one is the uh, 3300N, which I think now is not made anymore. And I think they do the 3100 now, the GX. Is it the GS 3100? I can't think of what it was. Anyway, that's a, you, you'll see that in a couple of my other videos or whatever. But um, yeah, we're gonna try and print a couple of mugs now. And another thing I want to try as well, when I did print my last lot of mugs, I'd done one directly after the other. Now that's not something I would necessarily always do. As I said, I was just going by this, the instructions that um, I was given for this new mug, uh, mug press. What I would normally do would let the heat press come up to temperature first, and then I would put the mug in, then the mug would cool the heat press down, and I would let it come up and then start the timer. They said that you don't do none of that, so I didn't do that. But what I probably should have done was waited between pressing the two mugs until the mug press did reach up to temperature again. Because when I took the mug press, uh, the mug out of the hot press, the temperature obviously, obviously slightly bit down, and I put a cold mug straight back in there, which would have made it dive down a little bit deeper. So let's start again now, and let's try now with this new paper. I've printed off three single images, which I'm going to actually print on these three single mugs here. So I'm just going to turn the heat press back on again. And don't forget, with your... Uh, dye sub paper or any sublimation paper although you can see on the back of this one this has got the writing on the back so you know which is the printable side a lot of papers sublimation papers don't have any uh, writing or markings on the back of them at all so when you look you've got to look pretty close and in good light to see one side is really crystal white and that is your printable side normally if depending what printers you're using with these uh, Rico printers, the printed side, which you're going to print on, actually goes face down in these uh, printers. And if I just show you inside my printer, which I normally use the A4 transfer paper, as you say, this is my normal transfer paper, which you won't be able to see the difference there. I can because of the light in the room, but there's no printing on either side of that, and um, it's only that I know what, what size it is. So this is what I'm normally using. So um, as you can see, all I've actually done there is Inc uh, decrease the size of the tray by adjusting the actual tray. You, you can adjust it with both width and height there by pulling this lever out. And as you can see, it opens and closes up to that new size like that. And then just bring that little carrier down to snugly fit into the new paper like that. And then you would go into your power driver software, which when you press your, let's show you, if you go up into your coral drawer, if you've got the same as me, You'd press your print button. You then get your power driver software, which is obviously there. And then you go to properties and then your paper size. If you want to add a new paper size, you just click the plus like that. And then you've got this box up where you can either have it in English in inches or metric imperial. I use metric, metric imperial. And then all you basically do then is get a, a tape measure, measure the actual size of these sheets and then put that information in there and then call, give it a name, whatever you want to call it, and then click Add Form. Once you add the form, I'm going to cancel that one. I've put this in as a test one. So your paper size for this paper now will be called the test paper. Normally when I've got this, it's set for A4, as you can probably see there. So that's just to show you on the standard settings for how you change the settings in the power driver software for the new paper size. So I'm just going to shut this up now. As we say, we don't need this open anymore. Right, okay, so Subly Blanks recommend uh, 185 degrees C. I've just upped it to 190. Uh, it's still not the 200, which I was already using beforehand, but I've put it to 190. And I've actually raised the time from 135 seconds to 150 seconds. So it's still half a minute less than what I was actually using before, but I've increased the uh, time from 135 to 150 seconds. So all we're gonna do now then is to just get our mug wraps. And as I say, these are actually cut to size, so to speak. So I'm just gonna wrap these around and put this on the mug. Now again, because you're dealing with straight edges, it should be a lot easier to line up. Take a bit more time than I'm doing, as I say, because I'm just showing you at the end of the day, but uh, get our heat tape. And just tape on to the mug like that. Cut the bits of heat tape just to go around there. And now, as I said, we've got that mug stop in there now. So all I'll do is I'll push this in there till it stops. Let me get that measured up first. I'll move it, didn't I? Right, there we go. So that's in the middle now. And all I'll do now is just close this up around the mug. 
and it starts counting down. I'm just going to make sure we've got a bit of pressure on there like that. And we're just going to count down now from uh, our 150 seconds down to zero. I'll take the mug out, but in that time, I'm just going to wrap this second one up as well. Now, as I say, this is what you can be doing while you're waiting for them to come down if you've got a little production line going. So um, I'll just try and get this one done in that time. Right, there we go, time is up. I'm just gonna take this out, and as you can see, the temperature is 183 still. So it's retaining its temperature a lot better. I'm just gonna put that to one side for a minute. And this one now, again, before, so I put it in when it was down to about 165, and I shouldn't have probably done that, but um, you learn by your mistakes. First time I've used this press, and I was using other people's instructions. So I'm gonna try this one now, put this one in. Again, I can just push it straight in, up to the stop, and then bring the handle open and we're starting counting down again now from 150 seconds and then we was up to 190 degrees C temperature. So that's this one here. Let's see if I can undo that. Right, okay. Everything is perfect now. Let me try and get around and show you. Now this is still very hot for me, so as you can see all these words are on the um, all the way around the mug there like that. Let's try and take you right the way around. Hold on, it's very warm. I'll try not to burn myself. Right the way around there, absolutely fantastic. That lightness there isn't actually a uh, part of a lot of it fading. That is actually the, the actual image is a lot lighter there. As you can see at the top there, it's nice and dark anyway. But um, that mug is actually turned out perfect at these temperatures now. And with this new paper, which I'm well pleased with, to be honest with you. So there we go, right the way around, all the words, right the way around there like that. So that's number one done. And that is the remainder of the paper that's left from the transfer. As you can see there, the middle part of it is lighter anyway, and it did get lighter towards the end there. So that's not a problem with the actual uh, transference of the color. Okay, we're nearly there now on this second mug. Let's see what the temperature is when I pull it out. So out comes the mug, and the temp, as you can see, is still up to 189 degrees. When I had the lower temperature, it was diving down a bit. Uh, so that just goes to show you, me raising that little bit of temperature a little bit more has kept the mug up to its temperature. So this is the last one I'm gonna put in now. Like that, hit the stop, and then shut the handle up, and down she starts counting, so yeah. I'm pleased with this, as I say, this extra temperature for my setup has tended to um, work a bit better. So you have to experiment. That's very hot, that mug. <laughs> and there we go, let's get that off of there. Again, another, let me just go all the way around this mug. Now again, this is a mug for a customer and whether you can see or not there, I'm gonna try and hold it all the way around there. Right round to the edges there, as you can see, everything is uniform, one color, and I, I was even able to go right to the bottom of the mug on this one, as you can probably see there, look. And that is a real extremity of the mug. Let me go right the way around, hold on. Right round to the other side there, everything is absolutely perfect, so. Yeah, as I say, someone left a comment that, um, Perhaps I was trying to pull the wool over people's eyes, but what I've got no need to do that at the end of the day. You can see the results here now, the lovely glossy finish there. Okay, they might, it might be a little bit wonky, that's me just rushing to get it done on camera though. But that's number two mug. So yeah, I mean, you will waste a few mugs, but these are the mugs that we've got in our cupboard. You know, I've got a cupboard full from like years and years ago, which I've done when I started off. And those are your ex, you know, don't worry about it. you're gonna spend about 30, 30 odd pounds for a box of 36 mugs or whatever you're gonna be, be paying out. But you're gonna have mistakes, you're gonna make mistakes and you will learn from your mistakes. Even me, after doing it for 10 years, once I got this new piece of equipment, 
I made a few mistakes, like for example, putting a cold mug still in the hot press. It happens, don't worry about that, but we can all got the capability to learn something new. Now I was, my old press, as I said to you, we knew that off by heart. We knew exactly what the times was. We knew exactly when to put a mug in, blah, blah, blah. But with this new press, there is a learning curve for everything you go through. You're always learning, but once you get it right, and we've got it right now, as I say, this is the first time that I've used this paper, this um, new paper, which I've shown you there. I'm well pleased with it. Right, this is the last one now. So let's just take this one out. Again, up to 186 degrees. I'm gonna turn the heat press off now. Just pull it over there. Now this is say, this is what you've got to be careful of, burning your hands. Sharon normally puts them down on the, on the side, but I'm just doing this now because I want to show you. Normally I'd let them sit there until they can cool off. Here we go. There we go, there's another one. And as I say, don't worry about that scorching around the edge of the paper, that doesn't matter in the slightest. Now this is the last one. Again, all the way around. This is part, this is part of the image, it ended there. I'm just trying to get you all the way around there. Lovely depth of colour. Oh, hold on. I don't want to burn myself. Right the way around there, as you can probably see there, right round. That's as much, see, you probably see I've got a reflection there. That's from my uh, big studio lights, which I've got in here, which was obviously played a little part in the uh, problem which I had on me last video I've done on this. But as you can see there, colour depth is absolutely lovely. All the way around, right down to the bottom there, look. Right through the corners, right through the straight line there. And that is absolutely fantastic there. Beautiful. So that we go, there's the three mugs. For those of you wondering where my light is coming from, as you can see I've got two studio lights there as well as daylight coming through there. And depending on the angle I hold the mug, that depends on whether you see, might see it a bit fainter or whatever. Well, there you go. Three lovely, colorful, vibrant mugs there, as you can probably see there. All printed with the new Dysub Magic Paper using my uh, Rico printer. When I've altered the settings now to accept this new size these are the uh the size of the wraps they come in one slice like that and they fit into my printer in the little narrow channel down the middle there so i've got no wastage i can actually print off to order one at a time as opposed to me printing uh, on an a4 sheet which meant that i was wasting two not wasting but having to store two other images as well and as you can see they've turned out absolutely fantastic so there you go, the new addition of my little clamp in there has proven a very handy tool. You just slide it in there. I didn't know what that was. You now know, I now, <laughs> now know what it is. And don't forget that you can also order these in three different sizes, the actual uh, elements inside. And it's a simple thumb screw, try and do them four thumb screws there. Undo a connector at the bottom, and then you take that one out, and then you can put in the smaller ones, which is the kiddies cups, which are the six ounce ones. These are the 10 or the 11 ounce mugs, mugs whatever you want to call them, and then the larger one they're doing is the 14 ounce coffee mug. It really is turning out to be a good tool. This now I've learned how to work it a bit better with uh, you watching me along the way. So once I've finished my A4 sheets of uh, colored paper, I'll be changing over to this Dice Sub Magic paper. And it does benefit, as I said to you, by having the uh, printing on the back. If, you, if your eyes are not too clever and you don't know which is the printable side, there's no mistake in it because this, the, 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 the unprintable side has got writing on the back of it. And that goes face down in your Rico printer. And then all you're doing then is printing off as you need them, one template at a time. So there you go. That's our Galaxy Mug Press. I hope this little uh, video there was a little bit interesting for you. If you're thinking about starting a mug press business, uh, do check out my training DVD on mug printing. And also take a look at the, the uh, Subly Blanks website where they'll be selling this in the UK. And I, I understand there are suppliers spreading out across the uh, world now for this mug press and also the heat press. It's part of a range which they're coming out with now. And as I say, we've had no problems whatsoever with the actual mug press at all or the heat press. And I was using uh, a cheap Chinese copy heat press uh, from many, many years ago. Uh, and also I was using the top industry standard heat press, which was our style hotronics for our t-shirt printing business. And I've now changed over to this new equipment and I'm hoping it's going to give me many more years of service. And one more thing as well, which I found out very useful, and I've had feedback from other people who have actually contacted me via the comments or private messaging me on YouTube, is that they're uh, very surprised on how uh, cooperative subly blanks are when you phone them up and ask for information about either the presses or their equipment. And that is one thing which you don't get when you're buying a cheap copy press 
maybe on eBay, for example, where you, you, the sellers basically just imported stuff. You've got no customer service. When you're buying off a reputable company and they've got good, good customer service, you feel like you're not on your own if there is a problem. Okay then, that's my little heat, heat press, mug press business. And don't forget, check out my other videos, also on t-shirt printing as well. And if you feel like starting up a little home business like this, treat it as a hobby to start off with. You're gonna make mistakes, but uh, sooner or later, it will grow one step at a time if you're moving in the right direction with it. Okay then, thanks very much. Hope you enjoyed this video. See you in the next one. Bye for now.